to talk about what you should do if you're an experienced professional. So if you're actively looking for employment right now, we'll talk about how you can continue to utilize the career planning process, no matter what stage you're at in your career development. Um, and then finally, I'm going to give you some resources that you can use both online and here at ACC to help develop your career plan and to increase your employment opportunities. That's what we want. We want you to find employment. We want you to get hired. Um, so we'll wrap up with the Q&A. You can ask questions in the chat. I'm going to ask that you um, ask those questions in the chat. Please stay on mute just in the interest of time today, and we'll get to any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. So feel free to introduce yourself. We love to get to know you. Um, we love to know how we can help you take that next step. So type any questions that you have in the chat and we'll address those at the end of the presentation today. So are you career ready? That's my first question whenever I meet with a student. I need to know, um, do you have the competencies right now that employers are looking for? These are the skills that employers rate as necessary for a successful career. And most of our students, especially if you're currently going through an academic program here at ACC or if you graduated from one, um, you have these skills, you have these competencies. But the problem that we see when we meet with students one on one is that a lot of times our students have a hard time identifying these skills and also articulating them on your resume and when you interview. So it's really important that you understand how you have these skills and that you're emphasizing these when you're connecting with employers. And again, the good thing is, is that you've already developed them throughout your education. We just want you to understand how to emphasize them when you're preparing your resume and also how to tell stories around these competencies when you're interviewing for positions in your career field. So what are they? What are the eight competencies? The first one that you see is career and self-development. This is essentially where you understand yourself and what you're looking for in your career. You understand your education, you're, you're aware of your strengths and your weaknesses, and you're proactively seeking new job opportunities and career experiences. Um, so if you're in this presentation right now, you're already improving in this area, right? You've already taken a proactive step in developing professionally and gaining new skill and new insight and understanding who you are and what you're looking for in your career. So you're already improving in this area just by attending this session today. Um, communication. So this is where you can clearly and effectively exchange information and ideas and also accept perspectives that are different from your own. Okay, and that's something that is not as easy to do, especially some of us, like I know, I sometimes struggle with, you know, no, thinking that my way is the right way. Um, you have to understand where people are coming from and be able to accept different perspectives, especially when they are opposite from your own. We want you to improve in your critical thinking. So this is where you identify and respond to needs based on your understanding of relevant information. Okay, you've an analyzed a problem and you've thought of an efficient way to solve that problem. So critical thinking is very important to employers. Um, equity and inclusion. So out of all the competencies that you see on the screen, this is usually the one that takes the most effort on our part because this usually involves us having to get outside of our comfort zone. You have to be able to equitably engage and include people from different local and global cultures. So you need to be able to effectively communicate with people who are different from yourself. Um, so equity and inclusion does take a little bit of effort, um, but it's definitely something that we can improve on. Leadership. Okay, this is where you recognize and you capitalize on your personal strengths as well as the team strengths to achieve whatever the goal is. Okay, so we want you to be leaders out there in your field and in your industry professionalism, very important competency. You need to know that every work environment is different. So you wanna understand how to demonstrate effective work habits, no matter what setting you're in. And you need to act in the greater good of the larger workplace or setting, right? So understand the culture and being able to fit into that culture is really important. Teamwork, we want you to build collaborative relationships. We want you to be able to work effectively with others towards a common goal. And then finally, it's important that you showcase that you have 
competency when it comes to technology. So we want you to understand what technology is relevant in your field so that you can complete tasks and accomplish and accomplish goals efficiently and, and effectively. So those are the eight competencies that you'll see throughout the presentation today. Um, and then also through a lot of the sessions that we're having this week, you'll probably see these things mentioned over and over because these are what's critical to employers when it comes to hiring students. Students, it's really important that you understand that employers today don't care only about your degree. Okay? It's not about just going to school and earning a degree and having nothing else to show. Employers want to understand that you have the foundation to be an effective employee coming out of college. So the way that you demonstrate that is by showing that you're skilled in each one of the eight areas that you see on the screen. So again, you'll see that emphasized throughout today's career planning presentation. So let's talk about your career plan. What is it? Essentially, it's just a strategy, okay, that you can develop and you can manage throughout your entire working life. It can also be something tangible like what you've seen on the screen. I actually created this career planning checklist that I utilize with students um, that can really help you accomplish short-term goals every semester. So especially if you're an Currently a student here at ACC, every semester we've broken down things that you can accomplish each semester to really help you develop professionally so that once you graduate, you have a lot of those competencies that we just discussed. The purpose of having a career plan before you graduate is to begin preparing yourself for professional employment as early as possible. You don't wanna wait until a week before you graduate. And you don't have to know exactly what you want to do, especially if it's your first year at ACC. So you don't have to actually know what industry you're going to be in long term. However, we do want you to start working with our career services team early so that we can help you identify your interests, help you build your skills, and also make the connections that you need to develop the professionalism you're going to need later on, regardless of the career path that you ultimately choose. So it is important, and it's something that we want you to start thinking about early um, or whenever you are making a career transition. So what are the benefits? Why do you need one? Students who have career plans are less likely to make changes in their college education and they're gonna be more likely to graduate on time. And again, that's because they know where they're headed. Usually they're more confident, they're more satisfied with their choice of occupation and also their area of study. They usually achieve higher grades because their decisions are in line with what they wanna do long-term. They're compatible with their personal interests, values, and abilities. And then essentially you see what's most important for a lot of us is that we can earn higher incomes in our entry level jobs because we've been taking the steps throughout our college career to make us more marketable, to make us more competitive upon graduation. So again, it's really um, important that you have a career plan um, because you see there are a lot of benefits when you've been planning early and you've been accomplishing those short-term short goals every semester. Okay, so let's talk about it. So let's talk about the process. Five steps, assess, research, plan, take action, and then reflect. So the assessment stage is the first stage. Um, essentially, if you're a future job seeker, you should be doing this between zero and 15 credit hours. And this is where you're just going to be exploring your interests, your values, and your personality to develop an understanding of your technical and transferable skills. You want to know how this all aligns with career pathways um, that you may be able to explore further. We have several assessment tools that you can utilize on our website. One of them is called Focus 2, um, where you can really determine your strengths and abilities. But I always say like when you're doing assessments, just beware that assessments can't define you. They can't put us in a box or tell us exactly what we should do. Instead, we're using them just to suggest areas for further exploration. So you're using it as an educational tool to better understand yourself, right? To work on that career and self-development competencies. So we do have um, Focus 2, which is available to all ACC students. And then we have another assessment called Career Coach that's open to everyone, um, regardless of whether you're a student or not. So you can really start looking at the skills and competencies that you need for career success when you use either one of those assessment tools. Um, so go on our website if you think that you're at this stage. The next stage is to do your research. And this typically would take place between 16 and 30 credit hours. This is where you're now exploring the range of career options. You're not going to limit yourself to careers with 
the ones that you're just familiar with. So for example, I used to work in advising and a lot of students would come in and they would be very confident that they wanted to be an engineer or they wanted to be a doctor. Um, but of course, once they started taking those classes, their, their, um, their priorities shifted, um, their ideas about what they wanted changed. You may not have to completely change your program or your area of study. You can explore different types of career options. So everyone knows about the healthcare profession, but do you know all of the different things that go into that? Maybe medical research is a better option, a better fit for you um, so that you can pivot without having to change your whole academic program. So definitely meet with us so that we can help you explore all of the different options related to your area of study. And if you're totally undecided at this stage, we definitely want you to meet with one of our career counselors who can give you a more in-depth assessment and guide you so that you're not wasting your time, wasting your money taking classes that you didn't need or you didn't intend to take. Um, so the research stage is really, really important. The planning stage takes place between 30 to 31 to 45 credit hours typically. So usually your third um, semester at ACC or your second year is where you would start this phase. This is where you're gonna meet with a career specialist to prepare your resume. We want you to be finding internships at this stage or other experimental learning opportunities in your field of interest. We want you to be using our online job board and we want you to be practicing your interview skills at this stage. And then the next stage, <laughs> and I apologize, you guys, I have been dealing with allergies. I was hoping I was gonna make it through this entire presentation, but I might have to take breaks. So I apologize in advance, but the next stage, is to take action. This is where we want you to be actively engaging in a lot of the events that we have here on campus. So you're gonna be um, assessing your skills. You're going to be participating in employment opportunities. You're gonna be networking. You also want to identify strong references from your supervisors and your professors. And you want to just be involved, come to job fairs, update your resume, meet with us one-on-one -on -one at this stage, so we can help optimize your resume for your job search. And then finally, once you've done all of those things, the final stage is just to reflect what was enjoyable, what wasn't, what, were, what was challenging, um, in what areas do you feel that you did really well? What areas do you still need to improve? So it's really important that you're always reflecting through each stage, um, but especially as you go through the entire cycle. So. Throughout this presentation, I'll go over specific short-term goals to help you move forward in your career development. And hopefully you'll see that you can effectively go through these steps on your own, or you can work with a specialist like myself to help facilitate the process. Okay, so what if you're an experienced professional? It's same stages, right? It's a cycle. So this is also useful if you're looking to change careers or if you are shifting from one industry to the next. You can repeat this process as many times as you need to. Career planning is important for students who are beginning their college program, but whenever you're making a career change during your work life, you can repeat this process over and over again. The career planning process is sequential, it's fluid rather than chronological, so you move to the next step when you're ready and you can move back and forth as needed. Um, so between, 35 to 40. I'm sorry, was there a question? Okay, so what I was going to say is that most of us will spend 35 to 45 years of our life working in our professional career. There's data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics that indicates that ma the majority of people are actually going to change their program or their career within three to four times within that time frame, I can attest to that, even though I've been in the same industry um, for a very long time, I've changed my place of employment. I've changed the things that I've, I'm doing within student services um, at least three times already. So um, just know that this is normal. It happens. Sometimes you need a new challenge. You need a change. Um, so whenever you're making those types of transitions, you can go back through this cycle of your career development plan. Okay, so what are my tips? Um, okay, so right now, if you're a future job seeker, meaning that 
you're currently a student and you're not actively looking for employment yet, there are definitely some things that you can do right now that are going to help you become more competitive when you are out there actively job seeking. So you see my five tips on the screen. I want you to volunteer. I want you to get involved. I want you to upskill, create a website, and I want you to reach out to your instructors. And we're going to talk about all of those things in more detail. I'm going to give you tips on what you can do to um, set goals in each one of these phases. First off, volunteering okay, is very important. Not all experience has to be paid experience. Um, so, you know, one of the struggles I see from a lot of students, especially when they have limited work experience in their field, is that they feel that they don't have enough information to build out their resume. Okay, volunteer through community service. You can apply your classroom education to real world scenarios with real implications in an industry that interests you. You also develop career functions in leadership, time management, and problem solving, all which are going to lead to greater confidence during your job search and during your interview. Um, there are so many different ways to volunteer here at ACC. We've made it really easy for you. The first is just enroll in a service learning course. We have certain courses on our schedule that are identified as service learning. And this is a form of experimental learning that integrates community service into your curriculum. So you're gonna to get to work directly with local organizations to benefit, benefit their cause while gaining a better understanding of how the content you learn at ACC can be used to generate real world changes. Your professor is gonna let you know what volunteer opportunities are required in the course and they'll provide you with detailed instruction on how to get engaged with your community partner. Um, so definitely just enroll in one of those courses. The next thing that you can do is just to visit the ACC um, website called GivePulse, which is a social media platform that en enables ACC and our community partners to post upcoming volunteer opportunities and connect with student volunteers. Um, and then the next thing that you can do is just go to Riverbat Reach, which is ACC's volunteer hub. There's a list of organizations that are currently seeking volunteers for in-person, on-campus and remote opportunities. You can also get tips on how to incorporate your volunteer experience into your resume through Riverbat Reach. So just go to the ACC website in the search box, type in River, Riverbat Reach, and you'll learn more about the community organizations working closest to your campus. So those are all ways to volunteer here through ACC. And you see the competencies that you work on throughout this, um, throughout this stage include career and self-development, because again, volunteering, especially um, in fields that appeal to you, help you explore different career paths that you may be interested in. And then also you work on equity and inclusion, um, especially when you're volunteering specifically to help people in need. Okay, so definitely volunteering is a great way to improve in those competencies. Okay, so I want you to get involved. Getting involved on campus makes you more viable to employers. In addition to making friends, you're going to meet people who will go on to work in a variety of industries. The main reason you want to join a club or an organization, though, is because it's just fun, right? School is not all about business. It's the time to explore, meet people, and try new things. So clubs and organizations can provide you with those opportunities. And especially if you have absolutely no work experience at all, I would highly recommend that you get involved on campus. I would challenge you to join at least one club, activity, organization, or intramural sport. Um, our student life department has a list of groups you can connect with. By doing this, you're not only making connections and new friends, you're building confidence, but you're also gaining some of those skills, those transferable skills that are going to make you more viable to employers like communication, time management, leadership. Those are all skills that hiring managers are looking for. So I want you to get involved as much as you can. And you see the competencies that we work on when we get involved on campus include leadership and teamwork. So if you're in a student organization, seek out a leadership role within that organization, right? See if you can become a treasurer or a vice president or a vice pre or a president even. That's going to look so good on your resume. And then teamwork um, by joining campus clubs or groups. Um, of course, you're engaging in team-oriented environments. So um, it's just a really great way to improve in both of those areas.
Okay, so the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to always be upskilling. Um, upskilling is the process of developing new skills to advance your career. And this can apply virtually to any career field. So whether you're going into nursing, business, teaching, you want to learn the complementary skills that are going to help you stand out when you're um, when you're connecting with hiring managers. So one of the ways to do this is to take writing classes. Communication is the skill that I always see can be better developed when it comes to a lot of our current students who are job seeking. It's critical because it facilitates coworker collaborations, business transactions, and also interpersonal transactions. So you need to know how to write appropriately for the setting that you're in. It's really important that you write effectively. Um, our continuing education department also offers a wide range of courses. So whether you want to begin a new career, if you're trying to develop a very specific technical skill, or even if you just are trying to learn how to play a new instrument like the guitar, you can probably find a fast track course on our schedule that's going to teach you how. We even offer a free job preparation course through our department, which I'll tell you more about later on in this presentation. But regardless of the type of online course or certification you choose, you're not only gaining new skills, but you're setting yourself apart from other job applicants. So I want you to always be adding new skills by learning um, ways to improve, especially in ways that are relevant to what you want to be doing. So know what's going on in your industry, know what skills employers are looking for, and find ways to add those skills if you don't already have them. Another way is just to learn a new language. The ability to speak a second or third language is invaluable um, as the workforce becomes more global. There was data that says um, there's only it only takes about 480 hours to reach basic fluency in a Western European language and 720 hours for more difficult languages. And that was from the US Foreign Service Institute. Um, so ACC offers so many different language courses. And in case you didn't know, we also offer opportunities to study abroad all over the world each summer. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of study abroad. This is something that um, I wish I had done as a student. Um, I guess when I was in school, for me, I grew up in Germany, so it wasn't um, as critical for me to study abroad, I don't think, because I had had that experience living in Europe. But if you haven't had the chance to study abroad or live abroad, you want to add a global perspective to your education and to your resume. You also want to strengthen your foreign language skills. You want to experience and learn from different cultures. And you want to also develop those essential skills you need to succeed in your industry. So take advantage of all of these things here at ACC. Um, I highly recommend it even before you transfer. You can usually do them at a lower cost than at a four-year university. So Take advantage of all the ways you can upskill. Okay, so the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to work on your technology competency. And the way to do that is just by creating a website. A showcase portfolio is a collection of your best work. You can cre create one for free through Google Sites. So I always encourage a portfolio. You should also be on LinkedIn, which is an online social network, but dedicated to professional networking and communication. LinkedIn is gonna help you find a job faster because most hiring managers are already using it. Um, they're already looking you up. So you wanna connect those dots and show them that you're already on LinkedIn. We also want you to use social media um, to help you with your job search. So follow the companies and the organizations you're interested in working for. And then if you're using social media personally, make sure that you review and clean up your accounts. Employers are looking you up online. So Google yourself and make sure that um, your information is presented in a way that is not detrimental to your career search. Um, so definitely, technology is a huge competency, especially for students who are coming out of programs Hiring managers want to see that you're tech savvy, that you're tech savvy, and that you're able to use technology ethically and um, effectively. So know what technology is relevant in your field. Do your research and make sure that 
you have the skills that you need to be successful in your industry. Okay, so the last thing that I want you to do is just contact your instructors. Um, if you're a future job seeker, this is really important because whether your goal is to go to a transfer university once you finish here at ACC, or if you're trying to enter into the workforce, a great letter of recommendation from a professor can open a life-changing door for you. Um, they can even help you land your first job after college. Uh, my graduate school professor wrote a really great letter of recommendation for me. It's how I got one of my first internships. Um, so the impression that you make on your instructors can lead to them recommending you when a professional opportunity arises. In today's era, especially, everything is digital. So professors don't just disappear after graduation. They become your LinkedIn contacts. They follow you on social media. And then most importantly, they can advocate for your professional career. So the best way um, to reach out is first, get your, let your professors get to know you. Um, so look for opportunities to contribute in your classes, even if you've already finished your assignments, right? Don't just sit around waiting for your next assignment. Ask if you can volunteer, ask if you can help with research, especially if it's a subject area that you're really interested in. Um, you can work on that critical thinking competency when you take on more research projects. Also, if you're interested in a specific subject area, but if you're not sure what kind of career you wanna pursue, you can meet with your professors. A lot of them are already working in your industry. They have a lot of insight that they can share with you. So visit them during their office hours to discuss opportunities in the industry um, that you're interested in. Um, because again, you have a unique, a unique perspective when you talk directly to people who are already doing some of the things that you wanna be doing or they've done it um, already. And also, if you're more introverted, you can schedule a meeting. So just schedule a meeting to meet with your instructors, usually during office hours. Usually they're happy to do that, um, and they're happy to help you um, in, in any way that they can. It really can help you develop your confidence and overcome any anxiety you may be having if you're on the shyer side. So definitely connect with your instructors. And again, you're working on that critical thinking competency, and you're also establishing professionalism when you make those connections. Okay, so we talked all about future job seekers. What should you do right now if you're actively looking for work, if you're an active job seeker? So it's a long process, but you need to stay motivated. You need to find ways to keep yourself active and engaged so that when the opportunity comes forward, you're ready to move on with it. You can. There's nothing holding you back from taking that next step. So I want you to know what you want. I want you to understand your qualifications. I want you to get prepared. I want you to grow your network. And then finally, and most importantly, just believe in yourself. Okay, so know what you want. The better you know yourself, the more likely you're gonna find a job that provides you with greater satisfaction. Confidence in your job search starts well before you ever meet with a hiring manager. You need to be self-assured before you submit your first application. So before sending out your resume, I want you to spend some time nailing down exactly what you're looking for in your next career move. Are you looking for flexibility? Are you looking for a leadership position? Do you want a total career change? What do you want to be responsible for? What company culture do you value? So it's really important that you define what you want so that when you find it, you're likely to connect with jobs that make you the happiest. Um, so even things like today, understanding, do you want to work remotely 100% of the time, or do you want to be in the office full time, or maybe a hybrid combination works best? So are you an introvert? Do you prefer working more behind the scenes, or do you like to deal with the public? So you really want to outline all of these things before you even start your job search so that you can focus your energy more effectively. You need to understand how you're qualified for the jobs you're applying for. Know how your education has prepared you. What qualifications do you have that are actually relevant to the position? And what skills or abilities have you recently developed? So think through those core competencies that we just went, out, went over. Um, understand how you have or how you demonstrated each of those competencies. I would also recommend that you establish a win sheet that details your results your awards and your achievements so that you have stories to tell when you're interviewing. 
Um, and you can also express that through your resume. Um, you want to have quantifiable achievements that you can express when you're writing your resume to show how you're qualified for the job. Also know the difference between what's a requirement and what's a preferred qualification. You wanna make sure that anything that's required for the job, you and if you meet that qualification, that you have that emphasized on your resume. So meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. We can help you optimize your resume so that you're showcasing how you're actually qualified for the roles you're applying for. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is to get prepared. Um, you really need to have goals each week that are going to help you stay on task and help keep you motivated. You need to show what you've accomplished throughout your search. Um, so it's really important that you set realistic goals daily, weekly, monthly when you're actively looking for employment. Um, upskilling, I talked about this earlier, but especially if you're actively looking for employment, you need to know what's going on in your industry. You want to pay attention to the skills, the educational requirements, and other in-demand factors and trends that are going on right now in your industry. You want to obtain knowledge about what prospective employers want most before conducting your full job search. Um, again, it's all about increasing your marketability. So if you need to pursue a certification, if you need to attend um, a workshop in order to learn a new technology, you want to do all of that before you start um, applying for those positions. Um, so you should always be aiming to add certifications, trainings, and professional development to make you more marketable. Also, I always recommend that you have a really great cover letter, okay? A cover letter can set you apart from the competition. You're highlighting your skills and your experience and a more story-like narrative. So you're giving more context to the items that are on your resume. So your cover letter should be original content and not just repeating everything that's on your resume. Instead, you're gonna be highlighting your resume to, com to communicate how your background story and your personal brand are relevant to the position. Um, so it's just another way for you to market yourself to that employer. So if you need help developing a cover letter, then for sure, I would highly encourage you to follow up with a career specialist. Okay, so I definitely want you all to grow your network. Um, don't limit yourself to online applications only. If you're only submitting applications online, you could be looking for a job for a very, very long time. Okay, so if you're only using job boards online, it's going to take longer for you to get noticed. By the time you apply for a job, that company could already be in the final interview stage or that job may have already been filled. So you never really know. Um, contact companies directly that interest you. You might be able to get in contact with a recruiter or schedule informational interviews with people who work in those companies. You want to be known to people who might influence you or influence your opportunity to get your foot in the door. So don't be afraid to reach out. Um, build your online brand. So again, we talked about LinkedIn. Most recruiters are already using it as their primary search tool. So if you're not using LinkedIn, you're really missing out. If you need help, we do workshops. We're doing one this week on LinkedIn. So if you're new to it, I highly encourage you to attend that session or meet with us individually. Um, but there are so many advantages to showing that you have a professional online presence. Um, and then just get involved. Come to our events, come to our job fair next week, meet with, meet with employers. There is what we know to be a hidden job market. And that is where 80% of jobs that are available are never posted online. The only way to find out about these opportunities is to show up and talk to people on the inside of these companies, on the inside of these organizations that truly know what their hiring needs are. So keep it courteous. Um, be mindful um, of how you're approaching um, employers, but we do events, again, to help you prepare for the job fair if you've never been to one, but I highly encourage you to come to as many events as possible when you're out there actively looking for employment. Okay, and then finally, I just want you to believe in yourself, and I know this, it's one of the things that people don't talk about enough when you're looking for employment is that it can be discouraging at times because most of us at some point have to deal with rejection, right? It's very rare that everyone gets every single job that they ever apply for. So you really have to stay positive when you're looking for a job, even if it feels hard. Um, take it as a challenge um, that you can use to discover new positions and make sure that you reward yourself 
when you're done by engaging in activities that make you happy, that keep you mentally sound. So take breaks, exercise, volunteer, work in your garden, do anything that you enjoy um, because it, it can be stressful. So you need to have those rewards for yourself when you're out there job searching. Um, stop and reflect on how far you've come. Maybe you've learned a new skill. Maybe you had a successful interview. You want to celebrate those small wins um, because otherwise you're going to get too affected by um, the fact that you still haven't reached your ultimate goal yet. Finding a new job is not going to happen overnight. So if you don't get an interview for the first job you apply to, that's fine. Just reflect on your application material, see what's working, what what's not working, update your resume, update your cover letter, and then just ask for help. You know, that's why we're here. So if you're actively going in circles and you're not really making the progress that you think you should be making, meet with us. We have resources we want to share. We have um, events that we want to connect you with to help you take that next step. So just remind yourself that it's a process and it may take a little bit more time than you expect. But if you're putting in the time, you're committed to the process, eventually you will find your next job. So just stick with it. Believe in yourself. And if you need help, we do have a class that I've been alluding to. It's called Strategies for Today's Jobs. So especially if you've been actively looking for employment, um, I would highly recommend that this class. It's totally free. It's four weeks. And it's our most comprehensive job search training um, that we offer to help you increase your employment outcomes. So we offer this class throughout the semester. We have it online. We offer it in person. And we even have options just for Spanish speakers. So if you think you would benefit from this class, or if you know someone, a friend or family member who you think could benefit from it, let them know. Um, we would love for them to join us. And again, it's totally free. So you can take this whenever you're ready. Okay, so here is a unique opportunity in the Make It Center. So if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity right now, we do have an opportunity for students to help us on May 18th in our Make It Center. So if you're energetic, you're outgoing, and you're ready to share how ACC is helping you with your career preparation, scan the QR code. You can sign up for more information. Um, and again, it's an opportunity for you to connect with members of our community network and then also have an experience that you can include on your resume. So I highly encourage you to volunteer if you're available on that day to help us at that ribbon cutting ceremony at Highland Campus. We do have several resources that you can utilize um, to help you with career planning. So we do have a worksheet um, that you can utilize each semester, which I told you about earlier. So you can really integrate those activities to help build your career readiness. We also have a career essentials guide, which has a ton of information that you can utilize to take the next steps in your career one of our most comprehensive um, guys that you can utilize. It's online and you can also pick up a copy in our Career and Transfer Center. And then of course, we have so many different events throughout the semester where we connect you with employers who are looking to hire ACC students and alumni. Um, and speaking of events, we know it is Career Ready Week, an entire week of specialized training and information sessions. We've invited industry experts, regional employer partners. They're all coming this week to help prepare you for career success. So I want you again to take advantage of all of these sessions throughout the week. And then of course, come to our all majors job fair on April 26th. We do have in-person and virtual options available. So look at the schedule, come to as many events as you can come to. There are also gonna be daily prize drawings. So you want to participate in many, as many events as you can so you can be entered to win one of those prizes. I believe there, there's Amazon gift cards up for grabs, um, $25, $50, and $100 value. And then if you need help individually, of course, scan that QR code, make an appointment with us. We can help you with your resume. We can help you with interview preparation, your job search, labor market research competencies, career exploration, career planning, and career counseling. So if you need help in any of those areas, again, I encourage you to follow up, meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, again, we offer appointments in person and virtually, no matter what region you're in, we will come to you. So just let us know how we can help you. And then just come and see us. Um, so this is our Career and Transfer Center, our main 
Um, location is at Highland Campus across from the bookstore in Building 4000. Um, so even today, we're having our career kickstart event. So you can stop by and see us anytime between 10 and 4. Come pick up some goodies. Say hello. Introduce yourself. We also see students every week on Wednesdays during our walk-in Wednesday event. So you can drop by anytime. Um, and then, of course, you can make an appointment. And just remember that the sole purpose of developing a career plan is to help you establish those short-term goals. We want you to expand your skills and build your career competencies so that when you graduate, you're better prepared to land your dream job. So follow up with us however you need to, whenever you need to. Um, we're all here to help you get hired. So schedule an appointment whenever you're ready or just drop by our Career and Transfer Center at Highland Campus for additional support. So if you have any questions about career planning, or anything related to your job search, please feel free to come off mute right now, or you can type your question in the chat. I'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Lisa. Yes. I have one uh, question right now sure. from Blakely. She said, should we ask for recommendation letters after the course or when we are applying for transfer? Does it matter? Oh, that's a really good question, Blakely. So I say ask for a recommendation letter whenever you need one. Um, so it's better to make the connection before you um, leave the class, right? So you don't want to wait until after the semester. I mean, sometimes it happens, but um, ideally you want to try to get the, the um, reference before the class ends or while you're still fresh on your instructor's mind. So it just depends on the relationship you have. But um, if they know you and you feel comfortable asking them for that, I would ask them while you're still in the class so that you have that letter and that you can use it whenever you need it. Um, so you want to have them write it. Um, I would say have a couple different copies of it because you may need it for future purposes as well. Um, also ask if you can stay connected with your instructor, ask for a personal email or follow them on LinkedIn. Um, so that you have that connection. So if you do need to reach out later on, you can do so as well. But I always say try to get that um, referral or that reference as soon as you need to, but ideally while you're still taking that class. But really good question. Are there any other questions? Yes, um, I had one. So first of all, my name is Anand Ayer. Um, and the reason why I joined this the seminar is because I used to work for the school uh, part-time in a temporary position until I got laid off recently. And now I'm trying to see how I can get back or get a, get a proper full-time job with the school, right? Um, how can I use some of these skills that we're learning today to help me reach those goals? I mean, like, Anand, excellent question. And I know that I think that we're planning to meet at some point individually. Um, but yes, so the, the first thing that you want to do is to align your skills with the positions that you're applying for. Um, and one of the things that we can help you um, do when you find a job that you're interested in moving forward with is we can um, show you how to use a technology here where we can scan your resume, we can scan that job description, and we can show you how likely you are to get an interview based on how well you targeted your resume for that job. So it's really important that if you're actively looking for employment here or anywhere, that you're not just developing one resume and sending it out to everyone who's hiring. You really need to target your resume for every position. And that's something that we will help you with. Um, I would encourage you to schedule an appointment with me one-on-one. -on -one. I think you had done that. Um, but uh, make sure that you have one so that we can talk about how your resume translates to those positions that you're applying for, because there is a lot of competition, even for the jobs here at ACC. You have to imagine that for every job, there could be 50 other people applying for that job. So what are the little things that you're doing um, that are helping you stand out in that hiring pool that are going to help you continue to advance through each stage? So that's something that we want to meet with you about individually so that we can discuss how your skills, how your qualifications really translate to those specific positions that you're interested in. So I encourage you to follow up, Manan. Because in fact, I went, before when I got my job at ACC, I actually went through you guys. Yeah. You guys, help, you know, like, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Yeah, follow up with us and we'll help you any way that we can um, because it is a process. But um, yeah, just making sure that you're aligning your skills with what that department needs, what that department is looking for. And that's something we will help you with. So if your goal is to work here at ACC, then um, for sure, find some positions that you're interested in. And then um, we'll look at those and we'll look at your resume and we'll talk about better ways that you can optimize your resume for those positions. All right, great question. Any other question? If I've missed anything in the in the chat, any questions, would you please uh, unmute and let me know or let Lisa know? Uh, I don't have any questions, but I wanted to thank you for the session. I jotted down some of the uh, tips and tricks and also tools, and I'll make sure to use them. I didn't know they existed, to be honest. <laughs> So thank you for that. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yes, I hope you guys all learn at least one or two things that you can utilize, whether you're actively looking for employment now or if it's something that you're preparing for after you graduate. Um, we're going to make sure that you also have the slide deck. So um, Sandy will have all of your contact information. So we'll email you all this information so that you can refer back to it. Um, but I'm so Happy that you were able to attend this event. I want you to continue attending as many events as you can this week. Take advantage of all to come to that job fair if you can next week.